Officer Rhodes, Officer Primarano, Officer Scandal, who have drug tactical training. Well, it would have been nice to have Bill Miner on that staff, wouldn't it? Yeah, really. But that's another thing I was getting to. One cop, one cop, you're, you have no backup, you have nobody to watch your back. You're in a city where there's thousands of people. Who do you know on a call if that's not a setup? Somebody's waiting in the bushes. Or, or there's somebody not in sight. If you don't have somebody to have his back, then how can you say the city right now has their has our back? They don't. And I know my Uncle Bo used to be chief of police in Schmuckin. I can remember me as a young girl having all the officers sitting in my mother's kitchen while on duty eating a meal. And there wasn't one officer or two officers on duty. There was like five to six officers on duty. Same city, same town. And also, I would just like to take a minute and thank Officer Rhodes for saving my nephew's house from burning down. All the questionable Christmas Day suspension. Questionable Christmas Day suspension. That was exactly. a lie. That was exactly. a good place to lie. We waste a lot of money in overtime. Last year we had an officer who was off most of the year. All his shifts became overtime shifts. We paid them time and a half. Probably, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but probably killed that overtime budget. This year they cut the budget down even more for overtime. So if an officer were to be injured, or, or not be able to perform our, at, our at our expense, time and a half. That's why I believe if we had enough officers to cover, cover the shifts, have replacements, because part-time, I don't, I don't care what John Brown says or what the administration says, part-time is not covered. We have one right now who's a school teacher. So if there were a day shift to be opened, he's the first to call. Is he going to leave his job at the school to, to come serve in the community? No, it's just like anybody else that has a part-time job. I want two full-time officers per shift. per shift, and I want two more per, per for the entire department. All, all if we have a situation, if we're willing to work with them, they'll be willing to come back and work with us. Amen. No doubt about it. And I believe that, and that's why I think you have the constant battle now. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, fellas. Why don't we wait until after the primary for a cleanup? 
What's that? Why don't we wait until after the election for a cleanup? I bet you get less participation from the guys running right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a fact. Actually, we have a lot of help, believe it or not. We have a lot of help. Um, but we just started all this, so it's, it's coming. It's new, and I think it's going to grow. And yes. It's a big help to the community. Yes, we big help. got permission to, to do all this stuff. Um, my second question was, um, I know we're in Act 47, and I know what all that entails. Um, my question is, we can't always worry about trying to get federal grants. Why, do not, why don't we start maybe finding ways to increase revenues? And I hate to read it, word taxes. But people require so many services, and we just don't have the money coming into the, to the city at all. But people want their, their roads clean. They want them plowed. You know, they want all this all this stuff. So where are we going to come up with the money if we can't get it from the federal government? That's that's something that I have to get more of a hands-on approach because right now I'm on the outside looking in. So what I can gather um, is, is is what I can come up with. What I want to do is it, it spoke also to um, the recent um, cuts for the meters that they spoke about where that. That is for controlling traffic flow in our area. Um, they plan on cutting down the, the um, or increasing the time on the meter for the same amount. <laughs> like it or not, that money got us $100,000 last year. By just slugging the meter. Well, I complain about credit and the ticket if you get that 25 cents. That's a big thing for us. Um, I think. We could look at, I think right now, looking over some budgets and generally looking, I think there's a lot of areas we can move different things, make certain areas a little less attention, put more uh, attention on other things. We need to put our community back together. We can't worry about, about everybody else right now. We have to worry about us. And I don't think we get better if we stay under the same tracks. I, there's a lot of things I work with the council. A lot of those guys have experience. Some of them will be back. Maybe only one of them will be back. Who knows what, what uh, next week's going to bring us. But um, I, I look forward to working with guys like City Administrator Slavey and Rick Plaza and the council, whoever they may be, who have experience in these offices to say, hey, I can put my input and the other four can put their input and Rick and Slavey and we can come up with a plan together. Um, I think right now you have a major divide there um, between our two sides of council. Um, and I, that's very evident, and we all know yes. that. We have four Republicans on the council and they can't agree for nothing. Right. Which, and they let the, they let the, uh, the mayor take his yeah. way, which is the way it should be, but I think it should be everybody together. Not just one person. These are what I came out with, because this is what I want to put together with those guys, because I believe this is what we need. Because what we have now and where we've been going is, is nowhere I want to be in four years. So I want everybody to work together. I want to combine groups. I want everybody to talk about like communication. We have what we have now. I don't know what's going on. Who knows? You're a day late. Sorry. And that's that's about it. But I, everybody, I would like to see working together. We're not going to get better if we don't work together. Well, that's what I want to see with all of our nonprofit groups because we all want to help each other. You know, Instead of having a million of them, we can kind of combine them. And I'm all for that. Any help anyone is willing to offer this community on their own time is amazing. And I'll, we'll take it. We'll take, including myself and my council. We'll be involved in the city. No matter what jobs we have, no matter what we have at home, some way, shape, or form, we'll be out there. And we'll be out there more than what we don't see now. That's a, that's a promise. Ron? Mr. Lashinsky? Just call me Joe. We, we went to school together. Yeah. We're here for Joe tonight. Um, forgive me for, for reading for myself on uh, Joe. And, and thanks for having me up here to ask a couple of questions. And I have a couple of comments, too. Um, I think it's safe to say that if, if you look around, one of the big things that I've noticed in this city is that less became more. Less police became more violence. Right? Absolutely. The less money became more violence. Right? So I wasn't here, and I was at another 
meeting, so forgive me for, for missing your hearing. You made it. That's all that matters. But um, one of the things that I, I wanted to know is I'm a Democrat, Joe. But there's no Democratic opposition. And I'm not quite certain who I'm voting for yet. Okay. And I know what party you are. We're all and, one. And I need to know how do I convey that message to my friends, my family, or even the potential for a ride in to get a Democratic nomination. I want to know, like, for instance, we, we, we talked about the police. We talked about the cleanups. Yes, I agree. It was a very, very, very nice day. Had this cleanup would have taken place three, three weeks, four weeks later, you probably wouldn't have had the same turnout. We've I had don't believe so either. Yeah. 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 I think we would have had a better turnout, and I think there would have been a lot of different people there. Roslyn Kane has done cleanups. Cole City has done cleanups, and the support just dies off after a while. Come to an election, you're going to have a ton of help. One of the main reasons why I didn't show. It sounds selfish, but I, I'm not putting myself out there for respect your position for anything fake and phony. Uh, but tell me how we can separate you from the the other candidates. You know, they're not here to defend themselves. Now. Tell me how we can separate you and what your policies are going to be. I heard some of the stuff about the police, but tell me how more is going to become more. How are you going to lead by example? You did mention that you're you know you're going to take a top down approach. But how you know expand on that a little bit for me and, and, and tell me, you know, and then I got a few other ideas that maybe I could pass on to you or even even your counterparts. Okay. Um, one, of, one of our big things we're in is the, the Act 47 program. And while I believe right now it's something we're in, we got to find a way to get out of regardless for 2020. Um, but right now it seems as much the difference between me and our current administration is the fact that recommendations became solid. It's what they say goes, or we have a threat of losing funding. They're called recommendations for a reason. And while they would recommend to us what they would like to do, they need to also understand that we have certain things that we need taken care of here in the city. So while they're recommendations, I would also fire back. If I felt, and my council felt it wasn't a good idea to negotiate with them for the best outcome and not say, well, they recommended it for this topic, so we gotta do it, but they didn't recommend it here, so let's spend. It's, it's been, we've seen it with the GPS, where there was no recommendation for $400 a month to spend, but there was a recommendation not to give an officer $300 a month. You see where I'm coming from. I think right now it's used as a crutch mm -hmm. and, and an excuse because I think right now we're not as hands-on and that's something I want to be hands-on with everything. And I think that something on that topic truly separates me from the others because I want us to get better. I want us out of the program. I want us to be able to flow by ourselves. You mentioned earlier about growth and change. And I mean, that's important. It's been, it's been something that we've been passionate about at the school. It's something that's it's, it's always going to be ongoing. One of the things that I'd like to recommend is, because there's so many ill-informed people in this town, and thank you, Matt and, and Joe, and whoever else was able to, you know, to, to get our, our council meetings broadcasted, one of the things that I'd like to do is try to even inform our, our area more. We have a lot of retirees that are bored. Do you know how many free grant writers you can have? That's you know how many people I reach out to on a regular basis to say, hey, I can use a hand here at the school, but nobody from the city does that. Why? Now, I know you might not have that answer, but that's more rhetorical than that. They're, they're, not here, they're not here tonight. And that's, that speaks volumes for them. Okay, so who's your opposition? Does anybody know? Who's standing here tonight or who's sitting here tonight knows who the opposition is without seeing signs? I'm guilty, but I think signs are littering. I'm I think that guy outside, outside was running for mayor, but I'm not sure he was causing a scene. But, but you know, we have we have we have signs. We're littering, we're littering the public with signs, but we're not putting faces to the names. Absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm quite capable of putting signs out there, but we're littering with signs, and, and, and you know, you guys are going to be forced to clean them up. So I'm sure. And I'll have mine. One thing I've seen you at more council meetings than that guy. <laughs> but he's going to save our city. But do me a favor, and, 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 and if you are elected, or if, 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 we, can, if we can find a way uh, to, to convince the public to find maybe a different Democratic nominee, it, you know, encourage that person, too, to reach out to the people who love this town, who love this city, who love where they came from, to utilize some of their free time and get involved. The problem is we don't advertise enough. And in the times that we do advertise, 
It's about this big. It's on a fourth or fifth page that nobody reads. I mean, it was Why don't we put it next to the police blotter? That's a favorite. Or sound off. That's a favorite. It's not the fair. I'm not going to blame the news item for that. I'm going to blame. No, no, I'm going to blame. I'm going to blame our current administration because they could call. They could call the news item and say, "Hey, we want this done. We have to do it for the school. Why can't they do it?" You know what I'm saying? New so, ways, internet's key, and I plan on using a lot of internet. But let's 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 not forget about the old folks that don't have Facebook. Right. We'll, uh, we'll also work with the papers. We're we're also we're also moving in a new direction. One of the things I know you said about was the grant money. Yeah. Here here's here's something. I I recently read the article and I brought this up at a council meeting actually about Hazelton, who just received three thousand or three million dollars in, in grant money. I believe it was. One million went to the police department. Two million went to their downtown district. Sure, some of that was casino grant money, which they said we're not eligible because we're outside the race. I'm sure some, most of these have spent money in those casinos. So we'll be talking to them about extending those radiuses for us because Hazelton, they're there, they got the jobs. Hershey, they got the jobs. What about us? Um, I want to also do the same thing that Hazelton Mayor did with reaching out to anyone uh, students in colleges that, put, that are in political science, um, people that have free time that have experiences in grant writing. I know a couple of people personally that have written grants before. That I would I would reach out to anybody and willing to pay them what what they would require to be able to make us competitive and to make us successful in grant writing because the money is out there. If we don't get it, we're not getting help. What are we getting now? Forgive me for my for my thoughts being juggled too, because like I said, I just came from a meeting. But uh, a couple couple more, and then I'll, I'll go sit down quietly and, and observe. I didn't get to see your intro, so I, I wanted to ask you a few things. You know, maybe about your plan for codes. I mean, I know Rick is overworked and overwhelmed. I don't. I know people have negative things to say about him, but I do think he has potential to do a good job should he have some help. Um, you know, I think meters are a huge source of income, just like you said. I think we need to keep our meters. But allow, allow me an opportunity to expand with my family and my friends who are Democrats or even my friends who are Republicans. How, how do I convey a message to them to say, Joe should be your mayor as opposed to these guys? Now, obviously, again, they're not here, so that, that speaks volumes. But tell me again. OK, I, you mentioned about the code enforcement office. I've been vocal about that being stronger. Uh, to be honest with you, and this might sound a little crazy, but trust me on this. Um, I think I've been very critical of Rick, very critical of Rick when I first got into this. I, I gave him a lot of grief over the way the city is. Getting to talk with Rick, sitting down with Rick, speaking with Rick, and, and Rick feels the same way I do. Rick doesn't believe he has the proper help. He feels he's stuck out on an island. I agree. The person who was in charge of public safety, John Brown, he feels also has put him on an island to fail. Right now he has two part-time guys they pay nine dollars an hour for and they come in and work when they want. That's going to change. Honestly, I want people in there that if you're going to continuously be a nuisance and break the law, you will get your ticket and someone will follow through. Honestly, this sounds a little crazy, but I would think about putting somebody like Jackie Brown in there opponent's son because he's not afraid it doesn't care who you are you're getting that ticket on your car if you don't have that 25 cents in the meter Jackie doesn't and he does not care. he won't talk to you but he don't that's his job that he takes it seriously I'd like to see him continuously doing meters and possibly have him helping out with Rick teach him the process following him through get him prepared that if something needs to go to court that's the big thing about that office we avoid too many tickets we let too many people slide, and we're setting that norm and that example for not just that person, but for everyone. It comes to the point where if I don't have to do it, why should they? And then we get this ball and chain we're on now. I will make the, I plan on making a couple moves with the code enforcement office and, and getting Rick the proper help he needs because I don't think we've seen the best of, best of that office. Right. And that's something that's major in this area that needs to be addressed. One, one comment, one final question. The comment that you said about bringing in one of your opponent's uh, family members to do the job. I think that just comes to show that 
you're really not out to get the individual. So I think that's that's something that, that I can commend you on. I would I'm not, I want to give up. I want the best people for the job for, for those positions. I, I wasn't aware that that was a plan. I think it's a good plan. Um, and Thank secondly, you. it's true. It's absolutely true. Secondly, um, and I'm sorry to laugh banter, but uh, secondly, I, I just got to ask again, you know, we're going back to here you are tonight standing in front of all these people. Um, I don't think this is the best showing we should have for as many people have been supporting. Yeah. I know we got more than the city council meetings, Kat, but yeah. um, one, of the, one, of the big things, one of the big things that we have to go back to is we. I think you finally talked about how you can separate yourself, but I, did, I missed your intro. So tell me. Why are you so passionate, and what are they doing wrong? It's just like you want to do it's this. just like you running for prothonotary, correct? Right? Right. No, it's not talking about. I'm just saying, yeah. but you wouldn't have put your name in had you not had a drive, a motivation to serve sure. and do what was best for the people that put you there to serve that office. That's why I'm here. Right. I believe I'm the most prepared. I've prepared for over a year for this. I'm driven, even though we're going to be in a total financial mess and not know what happens over the next six months. Um, we are going to be in a big, big mess. And I'm not scared of it. But I'm question, willing to take it on. The big question that I ask, though, is, is again, what's the problem there? And what, what gave you the reason to want to run? <laughs> One of my biggest concerns is, is actually where I live. When I was growing up, Franklin Street was gorgeous. We had neighbors outside watching us play ball all day long. The elderly were out, they didn't care. We didn't curse at them. We didn't vandalize their property. And if you look over the last couple years in my area, it's gone downhill. It's gone downhill everywhere in the city. Where can you say, can these guys say, and we can hear that they do every month, that was past administration. That was past administration. Well, this administration didn't do us very well either. So how many more years are we going to say that was past administration? We will work quick, quickly on righting the wrongs of this administration, trying to work with the administrator and other offices to come up with a budget to move us forward. Because I don't want to sit at meetings and discuss the past administration they're called the past administration for a reason. They're gone. And we need them gone. And we need someone who's going to fight for us and not be controlled by someone of an outside, outside game in this community anymore. Fair enough. And, and if, one last question. I'm sorry. Got to be honest. Uh, one last question. If, if current that four questions ago. Yeah, that's okay. okay. <laughs> if current, but now you're jogging. If, if current staff at City Hall, if current, if, or if current council, re-elected to City Hall. Do you feel confident that you can work with them and guide them? Whether they're going to listen to me or not is, is, is their choice. Um, whether I'm elected or not, if John Brown were to win and he offered me his seat, I'd gladly take it because I think I could be a big impact on that, but I'm not playing for second place. Right. I'm in this to win this. I feel, even though I just turned 33 on Thursday, I feel I'm ready, I feel I'm mature enough, and I feel that my sense of being stern and strong and making tough decisions is what we need, because right now our council does not know how to say no. They constantly do whatever somebody tells them, whether it's DCD, Act 47, or an outside interest financially controlling them, we're not going to... It's the easy thing to do. We'll let the next guy go. So, we're ready, Ron. We're going to give it help. Good luck in your race with the Tom Terry. Yep, yep. One second. One more question. You see, well, we both see every month same people coming to city council meetings. Same people begging and pleading with city council to do something. If you become mayor, what do you plan on doing about ordinances? I know, I know what you spoke when about. When you become mayor. When, when. I know you spoke recently at meetings, and when I first came, you were going months before about the rainbow. A section. whole year, one Actually, year. Actually, what, what you were told by DEP 
and our code enforcer that there was no ordinance that existed against rain barrels. To and what that, did you to find me, out? That's a containment of water in, in pools of water. What I found, I looked at a code book for one hour. I found three ordinances that benefit you. That, that were in fact in, in, in effect right now in our code that people said didn't exist. Yeah. So that goes to show you right there that I, if I didn't care, I'd give you the same answer they did. There's no ordinance, there's nothing going, we can't do anything. And let you, as a homeowner who takes care of your home, live surrounded by filth. And mosquito and stink. It's the truth. And those, I want to go over the entire ordinance book. There's a lot of ordinances in that book that need to go. Since 1963 was the There's last... There's ordinances in there that say for penalties you get chained to a creek bed for two days of hard Yeah, labor. exactly. Are we really going to do that? But it's yeah. still in there. They can do it. They can do it. Exactly. So I, the whole book needs an overhaul. That's going to take some major time. But going through the book, I, I want input from everybody. The same way I compiled these plans was input from everybody on how I did this. So those are things I want to see. If you have complaints, you call me. If I'm not there, I'm getting back to you. I have a cell phone. I have no problem giving anybody my number. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Not right now. We got we got hecklers outside. I don't want that guy with my number. What's up? There, there's not. I believe there's ten in existence right now. But I'm. I mean, the books. I would make it available to the public. There's no need to hide what we have in People need to know what rules to follow. They need to know what, if they, like Jay did, he bought, bought property here. You had no clue you had to register your property, did you? You found that out when we discussed, and, and I discussed with the code enforcement officer. Guy had a problem, he came to me, got it done. It's like other people in the audience here. They had problems with a vehicle sitting on their street for years. Well, that's another Phone thing. call was made to me within hours, we had to take it care of it. A one whole year. That's what it is. You one shouldn't one have year. to pay. You shouldn't have to pay. In, in all honesty, I believe in. If you're not informed, how can you be responsible? Yeah. Same way with being convicted of a crime. If you're not informed, how can you know you're breaking the law? Right. You, I mean, there's a common sense thing. Like if you throw five bags of trash out, don't say, "Oh, I didn't know I could throw five bags of trash out." You know. But but in reality, like I said. I want to move with informing, and that's what I want to do. I want to make the code books open. I want to make City Hall open without, all, without a lot of heckling. I want it to stay, stay business, and that's what we need. We need governing. We, we need governing here and not yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, because we don't know anything. And I think I, I have a lot to learn. I'll work with you and for you. If you have a concern, I'm getting it taken care of. I've done it for people already. How many people can say they've called them up there and they've gotten something taken care of in a timely manner? Most of you didn't even get a call back. I'll guarantee yeah. you that. So that's why I'm here. And, and we're going to do it. And I have no problem doing it. Thank I don't you. mind answering the phone. Yeah. It's the last one, Tim. we got to wrap it up quick. Okay, it's going to be two short, short questions. Past our bedtime. Two short questions. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Your, your opinion and feeling on a junior council being formed to get the youth involved in the city council is question number one. Question number two, what's your feeling on having a community-wide, city-sponsored community service program? I would like to bring the community service, to answer your second question first, I'd like to bring the community service into the city. Helping the, helping the community service program has done so much in our community that homeowners and property owners don't do or refuse to do. I want to get them into our, into our community, put them under our insurance, and work with the community service program for anything you need. If it's bettering our community, it will be available for you. There's no reason to say no to bringing the community service program in under the city. And your other question was about the one a junior a council? youth, a junior council. Because without their, without them being knowledgeable on how city government works, you're gonna have a kid wake up one day like, well, yeah, I want to run, but I don't know about it. Fix our government first. Um, I think 
I would like to see more youth involved in our meetings. I mean, they're growing up here. One thing I stated before is kids right now in high school that were on that honor roll list, that's amazing. Like teachers, parents of those kids, those kids themselves, they put in awesome work. One day, they're gonna, most of them are going to leave here to go to college, learn to trade, come back. We want them to come back. Why would I want someone who's going to be a nurse going and working in New York or Philadelphia? We want those people here. They're going to be the future of this community. I want those kids informed. I want them to start attending meetings. That's why I think the, the, um, the way of going with the online meetings to the internet, because, I mean, let's be honest, we just elected a president with Twitter. So, um, to be honest, it worked. It worked. So people read that, pay attention. Same thing with my group on Facebook. I push a button. I have 2,200 people on there. 2,200 people get the notification. I don't have to stand here and speak to 50 people. I can speak to 2,200 with a click of a button. But I'm here. And that's one thing going to the youth. I think it's a good movement going forward to get youth involved. Uh, I want them there. If you can bring the community service programs, hey, guess what? You want to do community service? You're going to do an hour of time at City Hall for the meetings. You're going to come to the workshops. Because and that's another thing, I don't want to have those workshops and those meetings at City Hall. I would like to ask that the meetings be held here. We have parking here. Yeah. It's handicapped accessible. How hard was it for you guys to just walk in the door and sit down? You're going to have to climb 25 steps to get up there. I think that that keeps a lot of people and elderly away. And I think it keeps the youth away. Our, let's be honest, a lot of our youth is technology and that's it. They sit in front of a phone or a computer or an Xbox or a PlayStation. I do, I do it sometimes, but I'm out too. But you're a perfect age because you can still you can relate. I can to relate to the old and the young. You can speak to you can speak to the older people. So that you know what, if anybody ever grows out that you're too young for this, I think I'm I think I'm perfect for it. No one's labeled me as old school. No one no one's labeled me as silent. I'll talk to anybody. I get along with a lot of people. There's not too many people I have, I'm, I'm enemies with. But I believe, I don't care if you're my enemy or not my enemy, my door's open. My door's open. I don't care if you're, you hate you hate me with everything in you. I'll speak to you, and I'll listen to you with an open mind. And that's a fact. I think it is a movement. What is that chili? The reason I brought up about the uh, a junior council, I actually have a sitting junior council. Because there's something that's, you know, guys in their 40s or 50s, they can go on and stand for a while. Bring them up and talk to us, Tim. We'll listen. There's a lot of work here to be done.